Hello, hello. Is it okay like this? Yeah, perfect, perfect. So, good morning, everybody. Let me start by a question. Um, everybody likes to turn off from time to time, like my voice today. I'm sorry for that. It's not in the best shape, um, but I will try. So, everybody likes to turn off from time to time, but do you like your device to turn off? Or do you prefer to have a device which is always on, which is always monitoring your sport activities, always uh, looking at your health, always verifying condition of the machine in the factory or your vehicle? So who likes the device to work all the time? Hands up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So, but how do you do it? How do you make a device? which will be sensing all the time, deciding all the time, and acting all the time. This is what I'm going to show you in my presentation. So once again, hello. My name is Petr Stukjunger. I am senior application engineer in ST Microelectronics. And I have the pleasure to speak today uh, about the presentation, which is speaking about always on the power of decision making at the edge. <coughs> so what does it mean at the edge? You should stay at the edge. So traditional approach until now or until recently was cloud processing. So the idea was to collect all the data at the edge in a sensor node by the Macure controller and send the sensor data all to the cloud for the processing, do the job, and come back. Condition monitoring, for example, was working like this all the time. Then, a few years ago, someone came with the idea to do processing on the edge, to move the processing inside the MCU, and to let the MCU make the calculations and do majority of the job limit the transitions to the cloud, and process the data there. But now, with our sensors, it is the time to stay really at the very edge, to stay at the place where the, SATA, where, where the sensor data are acquired, and process the data inside the sensor itself. By doing this, you will be able to limit the transfers between the sensor nodes and the cloud to the very, very minimum. And you will also limit the processing inside the MCU. And by this, you will get much, much longer battery life. Because as you will see with processing inside the sensor, the resources are much smaller. You can use much less current. You can stay with the MCU off for most of the time. In fact, I will speak about two kinds, two ways how to process data inside sensor. Because our sensors have first programmable logic, but some sensors have also programmable processing unit. You may be asking, what's the difference? This is exactly what I'm go going to explain. But from top point of view, so the benefits of programmable logic are really the current consumption. With one, two microamps, you do your algorithm, and that's it. This is the, the need for the processing inside the programmable logic. When you have a sensor with a processing unit, you are much more flexible. You can program it. I will show you how you program it. You can put your algorithm. It can be either a standard or AI-based algorithm. And you can really run such algorithms inside the sensor itself with no intervention from the MCU. So let me start with the first class, the sensors with programmable logic, and how these can be used in the applications. I will start by looking inside 
a sensor with programmable logic. So what we have there? We have there, of course, the sensing part, the accelerometer and the gyroscope in this case, because I'm speaking about six axis IMU, LSM6 DSV 16X. So we have the sensing part, but nowadays sensors are mostly digital and they embed also a lot of other blocks, a lot of other logic. So we have FIFO buffer, we have sensor hub to connect external sensors, we have motion interrupts, we have embedded sensor fusion, ah, pedometer, many things. But this is not the topic of today. The topic of today is programmable logic, and this is machine learning core and finite state machine. Four machine learning cores, eight finite state machines. So all of this, we are able to integrate into a single sensor, into the six axis IMU, in a very standard package. And I would like to show you how it looks like. So this here, I have an evaluation board with the sensor. So the sensor itself is this little black dot. You can probably hardly see from, from your seats. So the sensor is a chip of size three times 2.5 millimeters. And all this is inside here including the programmable logic. So let's have a look at the programmable logic and what it can do. Let me start with the machine learning core on your left hand side. So this is a way how to do machine learning inside sensors. Machine learning approach is about a way how to recognize patterns in the data coming from the sensors and do a classification. In our sensors, it is done through models based on decision trees. So decision tree is here. It's pretty simple. A structure composed of nodes. In each node, you have a condition. You have an input from the sensor. And you have a condition. And then you check pass through or false. And you continue up, down, through the decision tree. So this is a standard model. This is not coming from ST. It is there for many years. Also, the approach you use is very standard. So we don't want to develop anything new because there are many people who know what machine learning is. What we want to know is to enable this inside the sensor. On your right hand side, we have the finite state machine logic. <coughs> So this one is based on a finite state theory, and it's basically composed of states. So we have series of states in the machine. The state can be either a condition or a command. Conditions are based on thresholds or on timing. Commands are executing some, uh, some instructions. So we are processing, again, the sensor data and what is nice here, that based on this algorithm, we can reconfigure the sensor. So the sensor can adapt itself to the situation it is observing. It can even take the results from the MLC and adapt to it, or take decision, generate interrupt, for example. I would like to give a little bit more light on what you can do, because, OK, you see there is two types of logic, but what kind of things, what kind of motion you can distinguish. So with machine learning core, I was speaking about patterns, about classification. So for example, with this data, this could be quite typical data for classification. In this case, it's a data for human activity. It's some running activity. So to distinguish if it is running, walking, biking, for example, we use machine learning. We find patterns in this little bit of chaos. We find patterns, and we are able to say what the person is doing. Compared to that, with finite state machine, we have a motion which is kind of 
obvious when you look at it. So in this graph, we have three, uh, I, three times the same motion. And as you can see, every time it gave us very similar data. So it's somewhere up about 1,000 here, and then it goes down to minus 1,000. So we have one level, some transition, and another. And we can program the finite state machine to recognize such transitions, such changes in the output as a basic approach. We can do much more sophisticated stuff, of course. I will show you what all we can do like this. Mm, sorry. Sorry for that. <coughs> so this was, these were uh, sensors with programmable logic and different types of programmable logic. Now the, there was a second class, if you remember about my uh, slide of in sensor processing, which was speaking about sensors with processing unit. So let me explain also sensors with processor processing unit. What we have there is first the sensing part, of course, where again we have accelerometer and gyroscope. This is again six axis IMU. So this is the sensing part. We have also embedded temperature sensor. And if we like, we can again connect also external sensors through dedicated I2C interface. Then we have the processing part, which is here at the bottom. In this processing part, we have registers. We have the most important part, which is the core, based on RISC architecture, with including floating point unit. So you can do floating point calculations. It's 32-bit core, and it runs at 5 or 10 megahertz. We have available also memory for the unit, for the processing unit. It's 32 kilobytes for the program and eight kilobytes for the data. We call this ISPU, which stands for Intelligent Sensor Processing Unit. And again, I would like to show you how this sensor looks like. So here it is. This is, again, evaluation board. And here, the black dot, is the sensor itself. I don't know if you have noticed, if I'm, I have not mistaken, it looks the same, but it is because it is really the same. So I was showing before the sensor with programmable logic, the sensor with programmable processing unit is the same size, the same pinout. So in the same package, we are able also to, to fit sensing part and the ISPU 32-bit core including in total 40 kilobytes of memory. So what are the values? What are the benefits of, of using the ISPU? It's ultra, ultra low power. You will see soon uh, figures about current consumption. Few microamps, tens microamps, something like this. Very low latency. We cannot be closer to the sensor data because we are inside the sensor. It's very easily programmable. As you will see, it's any C programmer can program this core. So it's really open. Or you can use AI tool from ST. I will explain. You are very safe. The previous presentation was about security. Here you are very secure because you don't send any data. You keep everything inside the sensor. And as you have seen, the, the size of the sensor it's really small. It's a standard package for the six-axis IMU. We fit all the features inside the same package also using the ISPU core. <coughs> so I'm from STI Microelectronics, so let me also speak briefly about two products that we uh, have with the ISPU. So it's LSM6DSO, 16IS, targeting consumer market and ISM330IS, 
targeting industrial markets with a 10 years longevity program for this sensor. They share the parameters. So for the sen sensors, the gyro has full scale up to 2000 degrees per second. The, the accelerometer, again, selectable full scale up to 16 G. Current consumption is 600 microamps when using both the sensors. And okay, we have the noise levels and some parameters for the ISPU. What is important is that power consumption is really optimized. When you compare to the MCU calculations, we are definitely uh, below, we are below one milliamp. The package is very standard. You, I have shown you it looks the same because it is the same package and the same payout, pinout as standard IMU. It is very efficient in the calculation because it has embedded floating point unit. It has uh, instructions to implement binary neural networks or hybrid neural networks. And it is AI ready definitely with these instructions and the tools I'm going to show you. So very important question, how do you program this processing unit? First approach is using a C code, really the standard C code, all the or millions of developers know and are using every day. So we have the tools to use the standard C language. It's called ISPU toolchain. You can use command line interface, you can use graphical ID or our GUI dedicated for MEM sensors, Algo Builder. Second approach is in case you would like to implement an AI model, but you prefer to have it in an automatic way generated by the tool, which does not require a deep knowledge of uh, machine learning, of AI approach. So for this, we have Nano Edge AI Studio. You may know it from the world of STM32. We, are, we have a module which is capable to generate your model for the ISPU using this tool. Second. <clears throat> okay, so that was briefly how the sensor, programmable sensors are working. And now, where to use them? I think it's very important for you to know which devices can run these sensors and what they can do. Let me start with the finite state machine. It's a programmable logic which can target different applications. For variables, variable watches, for example, you have the gesture recognition. You turn on the display, you shake, stuff like this. For personal electronics, turn on the display when you flip the device, get the orientation of the, of the display to know what you are doing with your remote control. But we have also ready to use examples for industrial applications. Again, orientation detection, motion station, and also asset tracking. This is what we can do with the finite state machine. And it is not just a slide. There is a repository on the GitHub where you will find all these examples. You will find the configuration for the sensor. You will find a detailed description of what they are doing and how much current consumption, for example, you need, what sensor parameters you need. All of this is available on the GitHub, so in pub public repository, and anyone can access it using our tools, test it, and then implement it in your own project. The next topic about programmable logic was machine learning core. You know, the, the one dedicated for machine learning approach for pattern recognition and classification. So again, we have different fields to target, starting from personal electronics, anything related to human activity, tracking and recognition, we are able to do 
you can check your yoga pose, for example. You can check your head gestures when you have TWS, for example. Stuff like this. Similar for industrial, we can monitor vibrations. We can measure tilt or intensity of emotion. So something for the FAP. And finally, inside the car, or maybe not inside, but inside the cabin, but inside the car itself, you can detect if the car is moving or not, if it, or if it has been stolen or not, or it, if it is being stolen. And again, these examples are ready to use, developed and tested by ST, and publicly available on GitHub in this repository, available for also for your testing. Last but not least, I was speaking about processing inside the sensor using a processing unit called ISPU with the RISC core 40 kilobytes of memory. So here, we, we are really at high level of processing. We are able to process, to run high level algorithms with very complex tasks. What we can do? We can do sensor fusion, six axis on I axis, combine data from our sensors, get orientation. We can do frequency domain analysis, especially for vibration monitoring. We can do man down recognition or different human activity recognition. We can do sensor calibration. So in sensor calibration, we can calibrate the data for high precision applications, all running inside the sensor with very low current consumption, by, but high capability and high accuracy. The last question remains, what does it cost in terms of current consumption at least? So in terms of current consumption, I would like to share with you quite some figures. I will not go through, but I want to demonstrate that it really takes very few resources, very few battery life to run the algorithms inside programmable sensors. So when we speak about programmable logic, one finite state machine takes about three microamps. When we speak about machine learning core, the current consumption depends on the complexity of the model, but it's usually between one and 15 microamps. And with this, you can do really complex algorithms. You can do asset tracking, the condition of the box, if it has been somehow broken or misbehaved, activity recognition, head gestures, such things which are pretty complex, require significant resources of MCU, can be implemented all inside the sensor, and you have only the results, only the information, okay, now the guy is running, now the guy is walking, or now the guy is shaking head, stuff like this, with very low current consumption. Let's have a look also at the current consumption of the ISPU. So this is the processing unit inside the sensor. As you can see here, we have here the much more complex algorithms, like the sensor fusion. And we are in microamps range. Few hundred, in this case, microamps range. But if we look to the other algorithms, most of the time we are far below 100 microamps running all the time, always on the sensor, always monitoring what you are doing, what your machines are doing, what your vehicle is doing. So this is the difference. This is the advantage of in-sensor processing. So as I said at the beginning, to implement always on applications, there is the solution is to stay at the edge, to move the processing inside the sensor, to take benefit of the unique solutions that our ST sensors are providing you in sensing and machine learning processing, to take the lowest power consumption that you can achieve in implementing AI-based algorithms, 
and to take advantage of the productivity of developers who know how to use C code and who can create the algorithms fitting your applications and put them inside our sensors because there is 100% flexibility. You can implement any algorithm you like inside our sensors with processing unit. So that's all from my side. I just want, if you need to know more, I would be happy to see you at our booth in Hall 4A. And now it, it's still one, two minutes for your questions. If any, yes, please. <laughs> Um, hi. Uh, so you said that um, uh, both sensors, one with pro programmable logic and the one with uh, ISPU, uh, have the same form factor, same pinout. And how the MCU yes. recognizes what is behind this to program the logic or the algorithms in the processing unit? Okay, thank you for the question. So every ST sensor has a uh, read-only register, which is called Who Am I register, and with this register, uh, it has a unique value. So each sensor type would have a different value. And can they work with another MCUs, not from ST, or or they are standardized? Mm -hmm. So situation? the sensors are absolutely independent from uh, MCU. You just need to use SPI or I square C interface to configure them. But then there is no dependency, actually no relation, I would say, except this. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the question. I think one question, There's still time. Yes? Uh, thank you for this presentation. Uh, my question is, uh, uh, this sensor is a programmable uh, intelligent sensor. Does it support uh, different uh, power mode, like uh, standby mode or sleep mode, to go to sleep uh, when uh, there is no data to process it? Yeah. <coughs> Thank you for the question again. So the sensor itself, the sensing part, have different operating modes, from standby to low power up to high performance. Regarding the processing unit itself, it is processing the sensor data. So it's activated any time there is a new data sample. When there are no samples, for example, you put the lower output data rate, Yes. the, the processing unit is uh, in uh, standby or sleep mode. OK, thank you. thank you. Thank you for the question. OK, so the time is over. Let me thank you for, for your attention. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to visit us at Hall 4. It's like in this direction at our booth. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.